We have the opportunity to make a habit of empathy. The emphasis here is on equal treatment of everyone without respect to person's status or belief. That everyone in America can expect that when they enter a courtroom, they won't be treated any differently than anyone else. That's what justice is, after all. And that's what Americans expect of our judicial system, equality under the law. Now, President Obama has made it abundantly clear as a senator, as a candidate for president, and now as president, that he has a somewhat different requirement for his appointees to the federal bench. He's repeatedly emphasized that his criterion for a federal judge is their ability to empathize with certain groups. That's a great standard if you're a member of one of those specific groups. It's not so great, though, if you aren't. So it might be useful to consider some of the groups who have found themselves on the short end of the empathy standard. First, there are those who rely on the First Amendment's right to engage in political speech. Then there are those Americans who want to lawfully exercise their right to bear arms under the Second Amendment. Next, those who want protection under the Fifth Amendment's requirement that private property cannot be taken for public purposes without just compensation, and that it should not be taken for another person's preferred private use at all. Also, there are those who want protection from unfair employment practices under the Fourteenth Amendment's guarantee of equal protection of the law. I mention these specific groups because Judge Sotomayor has had to handle cases in each of these areas. And looking at her record, it appears that the president has nominated just the kind of judge he said he would. Someone appears to have empathy for certain groups who appear before her, but not for others. As I discussed last week, Judge Sotomayor kicked out of court the claims of New Haven, Connecticut firefighters who had been denied promotions because some minority firefighters had not performed as well as a group of mostly white firefighters on a race-neutral exam. The Supreme Court reversed her decision in this matter, her third reversal just this term, with all nine justices finding that she misapplied the law. Her treatment of this case, the Ricci case, has been criticized across the political spectrum as perfunctory and peculiar, and it called into question whether her dismissive handling of the firefighters' important claims was unduly influenced by her past advocacy in the area of employment preferences and quotas. The losing parties in these cases might not have belonged to groups that the President had in mind when he was articulating his empathy standard, but they certainly underscore the hazards of such a standard. They had important constitutional claims. They deserve to have their claims treated seriously and adjudicated fairly under the law, regardless of what Judge Sotomayor's personal and political agendas might be. Yet it strikes me that losing parties in these cases did not, in fact, get the fair treatment they deserved. Indeed, taken together, these cases strongly suggest a pattern of unequal treatment in Judge Sotomayor's judicial record, particularly in high-profile cases.